Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. Poor Faust, why do you seek death when you have not yet lived? Good point. Uh, this is episode 145, recorded February 12th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. Oh dear, I am your host, Jeff Moore. <laughs> That's the, the three of us said just a little bit. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, uh, on this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films released between 1920 and 1969. In each episode, we'll discuss the monsters, spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. That was kind of weak, but okay. Uh, <laughs> decades of Horror is partnering with Play Now Media, and uh, when I say Decades of Horror, I mean all of them. 70s, 80s, and classic era. So there'll be announcements later uh, exactly what channels we're on. But I know that uh, Classic Era is on uh, Classic Horror Movie Channel, Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel, and uh, Wicked Horror TV Channel. And there's also a free Classic Horror Channel and a free Horror Channel. And 70s and 80s, I believe, will be on the Free Horror Channel and Wicked Horror TV and uh, a couple others uh, once they get up and running. So check those out. We're taking over the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or maybe not. Um, in fact, today's movie is on the Classic Horror Movie Channel. So now it's time for uh, our incredible co-ghost, Whitney Cayazzo. Whoops. Accomplished artist, <laughs> makeup artist, and writer. You're all right, huh? Yeah, sorry. that's better than me. That's better than me. No. Um, also with us is Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of Horror, the '70s and '80s, a film producer and director with Rick Havoc Productions, and a comic book artist and writer. How are you, Chad? He's on mute. <laughs> mute. You're muted, I'm, dude. I'm not repeating that. <laughs> I thought you were doing that because we were doing a silent picture, but uh, well, that would have been a good excuse. But I have none. I don't even okay. know how I muted myself just now. <laughs> oh I yeah, I had it. gas. Oh, <laughs> there you go. This is I our speak too uh, soon, and then you were muted. This is great. <laughs> a crew topic of the week. Yeah, it's um, always a topic with us. Also with us is Daphne, who's awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell. Daphne, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm glad to see you guys. Yeah, you good. Here we are recording when I told the guy that's uh, the owner of this property, you watch the Super Bowl? And I said, well, no, I'm recording a podcast. What? On Super Bowl Sunday? I was like, yeah, we're not. <laughs> Football sucks! I'm not arranging my life around that. Besides, you know, you can record, right? Watch later and all that stuff. Anyway, um, nope, I'd rather be doing this, frankly, talking with you guys. So, <laughs> we got a spoiler alert for this movie. It's only 97 years old. So, we're going to talk about all parts of it. Uh, so we normally give uh, a few details about the film we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions, some taglines, and then uh, kind of take off down the road with some visual uh, aids. Good, because I need those. Our movie this episode is Faust, released in 1926, directed by F.W. Murnau. The play was by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. I think uh, titles were written by Gerhard Hauptmann and Hans Kaiser. Cast includes Gusta Ekma, Emil Jannings, Camilla Horn, Werner Futurer, or maybe Featurer, William Dieterle, and Yvette Gilbert. Mm -hmm. Sure, it did. Production company is Universum Film, or UFA <laughs> in Germany. Uh, I know. I, I don't know why that's funny. 
uh, filming locations, uh, basically Berlin. Okay. Uh, production date, September 1925 to May 1926. Now, the release dates were a little odd, maybe not so odd for Europe, but uh, uh, first release was in Denmark, September 20th, 1926, then in Germany on October 14th for the sort of official premiere, and finally in the United States on December 6th, 1926. The budget was 2 million marks, or the equivalent of 8 million euros in 2021. Box office was 1 million marks, which is equivalent to 4 million euros in 2021. So only made back about half the money in Europe. Uh, the domestic box office in U.S. and Canada was $800,000. A synopsis. The demon Mephisto has a bet with an archangel that he can corrupt a righteous man's soul and destroy in him what is divine. If he succeeds, the devil will win dominion over the earth. And there you have it. Mwah. And there's Faust with a bottle of stuff. Tequila. And then we got all these little uh, goblin demon characters flying through the night mm -hmm. towards him. All righty. This one is Chad's pick. Let's jump. Right into first impressions. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll go with Chad first. When did you first see this, and uh, what prompted you to pick this? Um, I just now saw it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've I've heard about it, and I'm familiar with the story, uh, but never, but I've never watched the movie. So, but I've always been fascinated with good versus evil um, type stories. And, and um, this seemed to fit that bill a little bit. And um, also the whole story was uh, sort of intriguing to me about this wager between Mephisto and, and this angel about, you know, if he could destroy this man's soul and make him something else. And uh, he would get the uh, dominion over the earth. I thought that was a cool premise for a story, mm -hmm. and and, and um, it was. I mean, I, I grew up. Um, my grandmother was really religious, and she would tell these stories about uh, Jesus uh, being offered. All, all the devil offering all this can be yours if you would bow down to me one time, and that kind of thing. So that. I sort of equated the two all these years, those two stories. And um, this is a, this is a little bit different in, in the fact that um, the devil or Mephisto, who is, I guess is a servant of Satan or something is uh, uh, sort of becomes Faust's slave. And that the deal was that he does anything he wants to for as long as he's alive. And uh, so it was. It was really cool. The special effects for the time really blew me away. I, um, especially those two elephants. It took oh. me until they, it, I could not believe it, and we, I thought they were real at first until we got the mm -hmm. close up of them, and you just yeah. you see that they weren't they weren't real. But holy cow, are they big! And <laughs> these two big giant elephants. The yeah, the production. ears flapping in rhythm was a tip-off kind of. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, guess, I mean, I, guess, I, I thought it, I did the same thing, though. I'm like, I, I guess so, but I was more uh, the visual effects of the, mm -hmm. every time Mephisto would disappear or or um, it was just, it was great and very heart-wrenching, too, what happened to Gretchen and um, and her baby. Uh, it, was, it was a very, it's a two-hour film, basically, and it it was enough to where it did not feel that long. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it very much. The characters were good. And um, yeah, it, was, it had a good ending. I like the ending a lot too. So yeah, I like this a lot. Good, good. I'm glad you picked it. Mm -hmm. uh, Daphne, how about you? Had you seen this before? Nope, I hadn't seen it before. Um, Daphne, I did you see those elephants? 
They were amazing. How about the rhino? Did you see the rhino? I didn't see the rhino. Yeah. <laughs> How about the bear? Did you see the bear? <laughs> I did see a bear. Yeah. <laughs> um, this movie. Oh my god, I love it. I, and I hadn't seen it before. Um, I, I, I've heard like, like Chad said about. You know, I know this. I have an idea in me about the Faustian kind of thing. You hear people talk about it and deal with the devil and stuff. Um, but I wasn't super familiar with the you know, the, the down and dirty details of it. So I was excited for that. And I thought it'd be cool to see something else by Bruno. And, um, and then just, I loved just the beginning right away, the inner titles or, or whatever they're, are they inner titles? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, the gates of hell are opened and the horrors of the masses that plague the earth. I mean, it doesn't get cooler than that to start out. And then just, Oh, the imagery in the beginning. Oh my God. That was some of the coolest stuff I think I've ever mm -hmm. seen. And, um, and yeah, the story broke my heart. Oh my God, this movie. Um, I thought it was great. I really, really liked it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I, I had some of the same thoughts about the visuals. Uh, Whitney. No, the same as sentiments as Chad and, and Daphne. Like, I've never seen this film before, but my goodness, I was just my man, where do I begin? I don't I don't want to rumble too much right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and say, yes, the visuals were stunning. And the opening scene, like the opening with the title, the, the credits, all, all of that. And then seeing like those the demonic entities and just the. Oh my gosh. Yes. The elephants. <laughs> I mean, and yes, this is a tragic story, but my gosh, like it's just aesthetically pleasing. I don't, I don't know what else to really bring to this mm -hmm. right now, other than it's definitely a tragic tale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Um, and it's, it's uh, heartbreaking what happens to Gretchen because she starts out as this sweet religious young woman and uh, then what she has to go through that we'll get to later but I too was oh God yeah was awestruck <laughs> awestruck by the visuals in the first say third of the film or so mm -hmm. later it kind of turns into turns into this kind of weird love story and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the fistos run always running around in the background not not really sure what he's doing all the time <laughs> but uh, he's up to no good, that's for he's sure. He's causing problems. That's for yes, sure. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, and uh, such cool costumes too for the mm. uh, some of the characters. Um, but so yeah, I love this, and I I don't know why I waited so long to to watch this. I mean, that's why I'm glad that uh, Chad picked it. So we got it on uh, Classic Horror Movie Channel. And just a warning to people, there are several versions around out there. And as best as I can tell, uh, if you buy like the Kino Lorber Blu-ray, you get sort of what the official hour and 47 minute one is. Um, and then there's also an extended hour and 55 minute one, which was like the English release, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, so the, the extended one, hour and 55 minutes, is on the Classic Horror Movie Channel. And the hour and 47 minute one was on Canopy and I think also mm -hmm. Hoopla, the two library, uh, public library streaming services. So everybody should have access to this if they want. Um, so I missed out on, I guess, up almost 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Um, I watched it on minutes, Canopy. Eight, eight minutes. minutes. Yeah. So just to hit that right away, the hour 47 minute version at the end, uh, there's a scene where uh, Faust runs up and embraces her in the, in the, while she's being burned at the stake, Faust runs up and embraces Gretchen. Then they, there's a big glow of light and they kind of rise mm -hmm. into the sky on the, on the, hour and 47 minute version. I don't mm -hmm. think it's on the hour and 55 minute version. Okay, yeah, because I saw that. I, I did see that part, so I must have seen the 147. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, you guys tell me, because um, I think at the end of the hour and 55 minute, you just see uh, like a glowing light. You don't yeah, actually yeah. see the two figures rise. They, the they sort of are consumed by the fire and this big right. 
the right. big shiny light comes, comes. and so then it cuts to the angel and yeah. this stuff. Mm -hmm. It yeah. seemed to me, and I, I could be wrong, but it seemed to me there was a little more of the uh, Mephisto Aunt Martha interplay. <laughs> Although that was hilarious, I can't remember for sure. Um, it felt like a Three Stooges episode. Yeah, right? that's a lot of comic relief. All right, well, <laughs> let's uh, before we go any farther, let's get to taglines with Chad. This had taglines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chad. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this has lots of taglines, actually. Holy cow. <laughs> All right. The first tagline for the movie, Faust, uh, it is uh, the voice of the tempter. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, okay. Are you sure these are taglines? I think, I feel like Jeff pull these out of somewhere well there's like bob's taglines uh, <laughs> website or something there there were none that mentioned plumbers i know that all right <laughs> okay number two now she was in his power i have no idea what that means <laughs> unless we're talking about faust i don't know i don't know i, I guess or uh i don't know yeah. All right. This is going nowhere fast. <laughs> the third one, the screen sensation of two continents. Only two. <laughs> they just can't resist those, can they? No. All right. Hmm. Okay. Number and now to for something completely different. Never before has the screen revealed a spectacle of such size and impressiveness as in this epic production. The world-famous story of fate and temptation, renowned as an opera, has now been dramatically immortalized in a picture that can be truly called great. Tagline my ass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the fifth tagline for this movie... Emil Jannings, one of the world's most celebrated screen stars, reaches new heights of brilliance and power in this masterpiece, directed by Europe's greatest director. The storm scene alone will make it famous, but its magic blend of unforgettable beauty and dramatic power will make it the sensation of the air. Now, how can somebody? That's like a that's a tag paragraph. I mean, <laughs> that's not a tag right. line. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, let me okay. catch my breath. For <laughs> <laughs> Here at last is the perfect picture. A quote from Charles Barkley Jr. Sr. from Berkeley, California on February 1927. And that's been Taglines with Chad. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> Well, they're odd. I guess, you know, aesthetics change over the course of 100 years. <laughs> People well, sure liked to ride a lot back then, didn't they? They did. They did. So let's take a look at uh, some posters. Uh, I didn't go as crazy as I usually do. Um, this is the one I see the most, but it might be my least favorite. But yeah, gets the point across. Yeah, big letters. Like she's the one that stole your money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this one, and I forgot the subtitle: Anadocha Folk Saga. Hmm. <clears throat> Is that Parfait a folk, Nugan. folk tale? Like a German yes. folk tale? Yeah. <laughs> that evil, yeah. evil Mephisto. <laughs> And then we have uh, now one. we're getting to it. Yes, I love I like this. <laughs> yeah, this one's crazy. Uh -huh. This looks like a fanciful romp through uh, <laughs> it's yeah. a small world after all. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ad for an episode of SpongeBob Square. You know, oh, uh, no. Skeletons, yeah. anyway. Yeah, it's like a, just about every character. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
And there were the guys during the plague that looked like uh, Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, was was that Ant supposed to be like biohazard type things? I assume or so. For, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, so the the Kino DVD. I like this cover, I believe. And the Kino Blu-ray cover. Ooh, I like that too. Love that. That yeah. one's nice. Those are, those are all very cool. Yeah. Um, fault. Fault. Yeah, they made letters strange back then. <laughs> um, I'm trying to decide whether to show you this. Uh, we get into the characters. I just show you the the artwork first. The, the cool shots. Artwork, artwork, artwork. Okay, I'm going to start with demons running across the oh, sky. So cool. Exactly. I see some yeah. flying monkeys in there. Yeah. But it's cool. And and this yeah. movie was uh, credited with lots of uh, innovative uh, effects, along with being a uh, classic example of German Impressionism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it was amazing. It really, really was amazing. <laughs> how I was visually surprised. amazing. Yeah, I was surprised I, I, by how good the effects mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. So these shots are uh, I, sort of the, and, and I think this was, uh, what did I read? This was an influence on the uh, Night on Bald Mountain segment in Fantasia. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. With stuff. So you've that. got. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was that, incredible. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. Mephisto looming over the village. Yes. We're just. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a sophisticated shot, too. Yeah. I mean, yes. it's, uh, yeah. You didn't see stuff like that in films. Right. Back then. No, and no. Even, even though that picture is so cool, it's like even it, it doesn't quite capture. I don't know, maybe because it's um, just a still. But just kind of with um, the, the way smoke was moving around yeah, and there was yeah, stuff, it was yeah. just it was you know, amazing. That's a good point because I had a hard time finding images that had the same impact as the mm -hmm. as the movie, and I'm mm -hmm. not exactly sure why. Some of the pictures as I watched them mm -hmm. seemed much clearer yeah. than what I could find in terms of uh, individual images. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here's the. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when he's having the uh, discussion with the, the argument with the archangel. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I could never quite tell, but it's so cool. It's like his wings are mountain peaks almost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, and sometimes you could, he looked more like furry and animal like. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, other times he looked a little bit more, you know, human like in a way. Yeah. But uh, all very, very cool. Mm -hmm. He and I love like how he, the uh, wings were giant on both, yes, of, both yes. of them. It was just mm -hmm. huge. Looked like he had a lot to eat over the weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sturdy. Yeah. There's another one where mm -hmm. it's hard to it's hard to tell when I when I saw it on the movie. I thought this is like showing detail of feathers. Mm -hmm. But now you can't tell if it's, yeah. Say that again. Or movement of some sort, right, but yeah, right. yeah, I think you're right about the feathers, though. Yeah. Um, or even uh, details of landscape, you know, rocks mm -hmm. and grass. Yeah, mm -hmm. know. it's just it's so cool. Um, and and then, then the shadows, the use of mm -hmm. shadow is just amazing. It mm -hmm. really is. Mm -hmm. And in case you you're not noticing this on the visual, that's Mephisto's head, like down below the second peak there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm missing a couple other ones. I guess we'll come to it here. Um, this is uh, an example of the expressionism in the film. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. See all the different angles, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and odd shaped buildings and stairs. There's a, there's a bunch of them with this weird spiral staircase. Definitely reminded me of Golem. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then this one is, uh, I couldn't so find cool. a good picture of this, but it was like the, <laughs> the three horse, you know, the four horse mm -hmm. only instead of there was three. But, uh, so cool. Mm -hmm. And just the, like the way that they would move through the yeah. air and just 
that Creepy. really got the battle. Like there was this, this all the like a huge amount of chaos happening and in, in like a mm. war and yeah, it's so cool. Uh, and this I I thought was really cool. This is Faust when we first meet Faust. He's uh, alchemist. Mm -hmm. That's that looks like a painting almost. It yeah. really does. Yeah. It, Maybe I need. And to I don't know. You know, somebody. Them. You never know who's using uh, some kind of Photoshop or graphics mm -hmm. software on this. This was by far the clearest one I could find, so it may not be, but it was close. Um, and then That's this made. is when he thinks he's uh, he's denouncing God. Yeah. Basically, mm -hmm. throws his mm -hmm. books. So go back one, Jeff. That globe there, yeah. not a lot of people know that, but it's uh, on the Van Halen 5150 album. Cover. Well, that's that's And I, I totally made that up. <laughs> I'm like, what? Are you kidding? It looks Don't like mess it. With me. It looks like it. <laughs> now I wish it was. <laughs> um, oh, see, I did oh, and then when he's <laughs> racing to save Gretchen, there's just this through yeah. the crowd stuff. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah. they have spears or pikes or something, you know. Mm. And he's really pushing. I mean, like yeah. he's yeah. knocking the guys, these folks out of the way. So those that are kind be, of the- That must be a little um, imprint in the top left corner. Of authenticity mm -hmm. or something. You see oh. what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, got, I have something over that. Some of these had, uh, oh, uh, bottom left UFA. Oh, yes. Uh, no, yeah. the top the top left. There's a little, almost like a... Uh, what, like a book stamp or, or something. Or something. Book stamp yeah, or like something. an oh. imprint, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. On mine, I see a thing at the bottom that's a... I see that too, yeah. Yeah, I see mm -hmm. that. UFA it kind of looks I, like if you looked at it real quick, it the one on the top left almost looks like a starburst or something like you or something was going oh, on in the okay. sky. I but, can't see that because yeah. I have a, a symbol over it on my mm. maybe if I uh oh yep, I see that. Yeah. Almost like a notary's stamp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably uh copyrighted or something. I feel like you know the fact that it's in black and white just this wouldn't be the same in color. And um, the fact that, you know, the contouring and all the, you know, from the silent movie area era, the makeup um, just makes everybody look so pallid and like bones. And yeah. I, yeah. It, I love it. It's just totally gives you that atmosphere that just adds to the story. I, mm -hmm. I really, it's great. Keep talking. <laughs> no, um, like when you mentioned earlier that uh, Mephisto had like um, moments where he looked animalistic and others where he looked human, but it didn't really, I mean, it didn't really seem to matter in which way, because like you're saying, like, it, even with the makeup, like his eyes are so expressive. And then even all the stuff that they did with the brows and then the contouring, it was it definitely accented the features and the way he expressed himself. Mm -hmm. it was really. Yeah. Well, one mm -hmm. last bald mountain one. Which was... Yeah. His expressions are great. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think let's take a look at the uh, characters here. And uh, to start with, Dracula. Dracula. That's what I thought at first. I was like, is there a vampire in this movie? <laughs> Such a, and his motions and his, he always had this sword too that it was sticking, yes. always yeah, whipping sticking his out. cape around and stuff. And going, whoa, his tail's showing. Oh no, that's a sword. Yeah, I thought it was his tail too at first. <laughs> oh, he's Mr. Mr. Manipulator, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see here. How should I go through those? Faust, Faust, Faust. Um, so Gretchen, 
who is played by Car Carmilla Horn. She was so sweet and so beautiful. Yeah. She was, that, yeah. Sorry. That bottom Jeff. shot is when mm -hmm. she's crying. Mm -hmm. She never, her character never wavered. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. She was never, I don't think she loved him because of what he could offer her, but she mm -hmm. actually loved Faust. Um, like from the first time that she laid eyes on him, you know, and um, it, that was just such a great uh, relationship I, on her part, I think, mm -hmm. um, because it was the most honest and it was the most pure uh, intentions on her part. Um, where as Faust, you weren't sure mm -hmm. exactly because of everything he had been doing before the, before uh, this. So hey, it, made, it made it that more, much more tragic to me. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, let's run through the story a little bit. Please help me out if I misstate something, but uh, they're having the black plague is killing everybody off. And this is Mephisto's doing according to the movie, right? Mm -hmm. After he makes the bet with the archangel that I can sway this godly person, Faust. And Faust is trying and praying and trying to discover a cure. And all he could come up with is stuff that kills the patients, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, and so finally, he denounces God, signs a contract with Mephisto that he'll be able to cure people. But when he goes to cure him, the people are Christians and there's crosses all around and he mm -hmm. can't go anywhere near him because he's now an agent of Satan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then even though he's trying to save people, <laughs> right? He is right. trying to save people. Yeah. And then wait, he's afraid of the cross. You know, we yeah. have to, yeah. and, and then the crowd turns <laughs> on him and like on a dime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't get to do it all. I mean, he sacrificed all this mm -hmm. for what he thought was to save people. And mm -hmm. that was that shot of, of Mephisto's leaning over the town. I guess it was mm -hmm. meant to show his influence covering that town now. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's when the plague started right. and everything. And I but, love that too. I love that that yeah, was kind of was, like representing this darkness that was mm -hmm. kind of taking over. Once the bet was on, that's mm -hmm. they went right to him showing that. Well, that didn't. This town is mine. It didn't take much mm -hmm. gossip for them to like no. totally turn on somebody. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. That was that was. So bad. he's he's ready to kill himself. Mephisto's like, you can't kill yourself. You have to. In fact, he talks him. He talks Faust into the deal just for one day. Mm -hmm. And we're getting towards the end of the day, and uh, Mephisto offers him eternal youth and anything mm -hmm. that he wants. You know, you haven't really even for eternity, yeah, yeah. Well, and he finally scene, takes it. Yeah. Sorry, just real Go quickly, ahead. real quick. Like even with the scene where you know they make that deal, you know, seeing that little bit, even though with the with the um the blood and then yeah, the yeah, that, oh, that, that's such a cringe moment mm, for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, even for the time, that was still that effective. was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Jeff. You go ahead. No, no, no that was a good point. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, signing in blood. Mm -hmm. How the contract yeah. burns into the mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it bursts into flames with the words so in, the, cool. in the contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I know we're going. Oh, we're kind of recapping the story really quick, but um, I this there's something I wanted to comment because I didn't know if I would remember it, and it wasn't that big of a deal through the story. But when he was struggling to kind of deal with the fact that he wasn't healing anybody and he was like angry about religion, angry about science, everything. Um, and Mephisto is telling, you know, talking to him and he's like, well, maybe I'll save people. Some of the imagery um, that we're now had in those scenes were like with all the arms going up, it was like, um, I thought that was really beautiful too. Like he could save all these people, you know, if he did this or, you know, think of all the people you could save in one day, you well, know, the crowds, was, the crowds were coming to him. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. They, they were. Yeah. And so, he, and he was like imagining like all these, all these people that needed him. And I just felt like, um, I, I felt like that was, you know, interesting about Faust, but mostly I was just, I thought it was a beautiful imagery just to see was, all those yeah. arms reaching up to him. Um, 
I, I just thought that was really powerful. And it wasn't a huge part of the story, but it was a beautiful scene. Mm -hmm. And we should mention too about how after he summoned uh, Mephisto, how they met. He would meet, he met him and he, Mephisto took his hat off yeah. and he kept mm -hmm. seeing him on the walk home yeah. until well, he finally got so home. So creepy, yeah. And so that so, was so, so yeah, creepy. he yeah. finds, yeah. you're right. Let's go back to that. When he summons <laughs> Mephisto, he finds this book that says he, I, I absolutely love this. He has, to, I mean, shades of Robert Johnson. He's got to go to the crossroads. To the crossroads, yeah. <laughs> to summon yeah. the yeah. devil three times. And then when yeah. he sees him, each time he sees him, it takes the hat off mm -hmm. and then looks towards the camera and the eyes yeah. are glowing. So, you know, like a so powerful and creepy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I even just the scene of the crossroads, just seeing those cross the crossroads with before he even gets there, it's just like, oh man, it's just yeah. it's so good. The circles oh, and the he made with the, the books. circles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had, I, yeah. They gave me goosebumps. Just, I was great like, effect. Yeah. He's going to the crossroads. crossroads this, yep. Did Robert Johnson see Faust? <laughs> what is going on here? This is weird. Uh, he so may yeah, have. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and, and you know, I mean, there was it wasn't Robert Johnson famously recorded it, but I'm sure other people sang similar songs at the time. Uh, that, that he and another off. couple of scenes during the plague that I really liked, and it was funny that it was in a tagline, but I I really liked the um, the storm scene when the first guy that um, you know he's dancing around in some sort of maybe a bear costume or something, and he gets struck with the plague, and then the storm starts, and yeah. the music changes, and then he falls down and is hanging, you know, like mm -hmm. hanging down the stairs, and the tent comes whipping over there. I was. I'm that just blew me away too. Just this scenes like that. And then um, when that but somebody young, runs up and peels the mask, peels back, the mask you know, off because yeah. he passes play. out. Right. Yeah. And then he, he, he dies and falls down and it just lingers on him with the wind. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then there was a scene with when the woman, when a young girl runs and gets Faust because her mom is sick. And um, that's when I really was noticing the contouring makeup and stuff because um, her mom looked so like a skeleton, but also was beautiful. It was yeah. like this, mm -hmm. like the sharp, um, her features were mm -hmm. beautiful, mm -hmm. but sick, you know, yeah. and, um, very skeletal. Yeah. 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 And then she was in the foreground and then Faust kind of came out of the shadows approaching her and, you know, these are all just beautiful scenes that are only like a few minutes long and really just to introduce you to Faust's character at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's, they're just amazing. They're really beautiful. Yeah, it's, it is. I'm glad you're picking up on those. Um, so if you think of anything else, go ahead and, and <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Okay. Yeah. I just don't want uh, us to get off. I didn't want us to get off track of telling no, the no. story, but I knew that I wouldn't remember that. But somehow, so. somehow Mephisto, uh, talks him into well, i'm glad you did because it made me think of the crossroads and <laughs> uh the uh somehow or another you know after mephisto convinces him to take the youth and and anything he can get then he literally just says oh hey let's go to this wedding where the most beautiful woman in italy or europe or whatever it was mm -hmm. is there and he goes there and uh, i guess uses a spell to make her fall in love for with him yeah Faust yeah. or what was it? Oh, that, Mephisto, that bright box. Yeah, yeah. Burst into a big uh, star or something light. Mm -hmm. Like looked like it yeah. blinded everybody, but yeah, but her. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Mephisto just kills her fiance. Yeah, or her husband at that mm -hmm. point, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, her husband. You're right at the wedding. Yeah, he just stabs him, <laughs> stabs him with the sword. Yeah. Uh, that was a great. That was a great scene. It, mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of uh, the reasons uh, Faust wanted to turn to turn to Mephisto in the first place was to help people. Mm -hmm. But then Mephisto, as this story progresses, starts tempting him mm -hmm. with all these this other stuff. Like mm -hmm. you'll have look at all this here, and they're flying over the the countryside yep. and through mountains, and you know this this late this woman could be yours and. And that kind of thing. So he starts sort of corrupting Faust uh, mm -hmm. a little bit there, and, and Faust sort of 
starts losing his original intention of why mm -hmm. he, he wanted that in the first mm -hmm. place, right. which is a good theme of that's one of the best themes of good versus evil of how mm -hmm. uh, some people, good people can be tempted into bad mm -hmm. things. And mm -hmm. Yep. Well, well, he does convert them, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you yeah. call it convert them, because at one point they're talking about intoxication after intoxication, you know, of all mm -hmm. these, all these uh, things he's done, mm -hmm. um, and now he's just like, I don't know. The, the way I took it was he was bored with it. You know, he'd done mm -hmm. all this mm -hmm. stuff, and yeah. Mephisto's going, "Well, what do you want now? Mm -hmm. Card game." Woman orgy, orgy. I know. Yeah, and I thought it was very uh, interesting that um, that Mephisto the time. I mean, because Mephisto was tr messing with the clock, like he kept turning it yes. over and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, but it stopped like when he was in the middle of having sex with the with a woman, mm -hmm. and so it's like, uh, do you want to go back to your old age now, or do you want to stay here? You know, it's just like. I just thought it was interesting, like, wow, that's a little racy, you know, to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. straightforward. It's not even insinuating. It's like Mephisto pops his head down there in the mm. bed. Oh, and he it's doesn't like, he doesn't know. hold back either. He just <laughs> slaps his head right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's like, no, let's stick with the youth. And then So apparently you know. he's abandoned the Duchess <laughs> and moved on to mm -hmm. a long string of other women and other debaucheries and mm -hmm. um I forget it. That, oh, then he says he wants to go home, yeah. and you have to do what I tell you to do. Yeah. So, and that's when he sees Gretchen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mephisto tries really hard. Oh, you don't want that goody two shoes. Yes. There's lots of other women mm -hmm. that are better suited for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty blatant. He's pretty blatant. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And then we see her going to church. They go to, to see a Easter ceremony. Uh, it's just, uh... and he does these things. I, I know, what's up with that? So he comes up with something. Mephisto says, he, you know, Faust says, you got to do this because you got to. You got to do what mm -hmm. I tell you to do. You know, mm -hmm. and so Mephisto is going to make her like him, but there's always a twist to it. So mm -hmm. it's this. If she wears this necklace, or if it's even in the room, if it, yeah. she gets affected by if it's even in the house, yeah. so he puts this necklace in a room and she finds it, and you see her gradually start to become sort of infatuated. Doesn't really mm -hmm. seem, and and frankly, what what is her sin? Mm -hmm. uh, she, I know it's, it's terrible. She has none. It's she has terrible, sex with yeah. this guy once. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, they put mm -hmm. her in the stockade. Everybody her, turns against her. Yeah, her, her brother. Yeah. I mean, her brother says, you put know. this horror in the yeah. stockade after I die. Give me yeah. my last rights. Mm -hmm. Which, Which again, I, I thought maybe the brother was after her. Yeah, it was kind a of little bit. I wasn't sure, but that's the vibe I had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they were, they were pretty chummy, but uh, I, I didn't. He kills the brother mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. Faust is having a sword fight with him. And then immediately says, you better run because you just killed her brother. And then he starts running up and down the, the street shouting murder, murder, murder. murder. Yeah. murder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Faust was the one who went and got the brother and said, you're, you know, your sis, your daughter, your sister is the most gorgeous, you know, gorgeous woman. Mephisto, and Mephisto, yeah. Mephisto, Mephisto, yeah. Mephisto goes yeah. and gets her brother, and basically yeah. calls Gretchen a slut, and she's with a guy right now, and so that's what sent. So he like sends the brother over there, murders yeah. him, and then so, starts so screaming. Right that's that's the old uh, kind of the monkey's paw thing. I have to do what you tell me to do. But, but there's but there's a a catch. A catch. I, got, I got you hooked up with this girl, but I'm gonna ruin both of your lives in the meantime. So um, then she's in the stockades, and everybody just stands around going because they don't yeah. have TVs. Oh, they're laughing know, at her. They're really having fun. And... They're really having fun watching her. Well, you know that's a good point too, because way back in the plague part, there was a part where they. I think it's the priest is 
Mm-hmm. Somebody is mm-hmm. yelling at them to, uh, you know, have faith. Faith, God's faith in God will help cure you. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And and uh, why are you disrespecting God? Because because uh, they're all just going. Well, what do we care? We're all going to die anyway. We're going to mm-hmm. go have fun and party and. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was I. I was really blown away by Camilla Horn as Gretchen because, um, especially when she started, like when she was in the stockade, when she was in prison, when she got released um, back to her house. I mean, she looked like sh- like a zombie yeah. the way mm-hmm. she was walking around, and oh my god, in the snow when she's in the snow and with her baby. Oh my gosh. Oh God. You know, and I just felt like she, her whole, her whole bit, her acting in that was just really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. That lower picture there when she's, um, you know, and then she starts seeing things and she's like looking around, you know, she's playing with the kids and everything. She's imagining all these things. Um, It's just really powerful. And she did such a, a lovely job. She was so out of her mind about mm-hmm. things she she uh, um, sort of had had a mirage of this baby mm-hmm. uh, crib there, mm-hmm. and she, you know, mm-hmm. and you just it just broke your heart seeing her lay the, you know put the baby mm-hmm. in there because you knew what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But it, it's uh, it was also no one would help her. No one right. would help her. Look terrible. Right. And, um, oh, you're that girl that was in the stockade. Yeah. Get away yeah. from me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go from that top picture mm-hmm. to these two pictures. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. like... it almost didn't look like the same person. No. At all. Yeah. Right. No. When she when she went back to her house and it was all empty and she saw her mom's chair and she was just like wandering around the house, I was like, yeah. she's she's just a shell. I mean, yeah. she was so good at that, the actress, the actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was she was excellent. Yeah. Um, seems to me, too, that uh, she had a pretty long career, I believe. Didn't really get into details, but uh, yeah, 71 credits. And like a lot of people, kind of off and on over time. Sometimes a, a lot of work, sometimes spaced out. You don't know what's going on with their life. Mm-hmm. And when she was she the actress that replaced uh, Lillian Gish? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, wow. Yeah. Murnau wanted mm-hmm. Lillian Gish. Well, and she certainly filled those shoes mm-hmm. because uh, yeah. she did yeah. a great job. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, let's look at, we, we talked about Mephisto here, but I wanted to. <laughs> what are you doing, Bon? <laughs> so here's with uh, old Faust and then yeah. young Faust. And that yeah. that top picture of Mephisto was his first appearance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When he first shows up, that's what he looks like at the mm-hmm. crossroads. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not sure when it was he turned up, changed over. I think when they started, he started to fly him around over yeah. everything. Is oh, when he right. changed into that. Mm-hmm. But that's such a cool outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, makeup so, uh, job too. Yeah, yeah. And these little touches, you like that feather too. That mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. a black. I don't know mm-hmm. what. I thought it was a horn at first and yeah, a single yeah. horn, but mm-hmm. it was a feather. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when they're, that's the trip, I think, in the top mm-hmm. image. He takes him on his flying cape. First thing we're going to do, Faust, is go find you some pants. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, the bottom picture is when I think when Faust is. Like, I can't bored. think of anything I want to do yet. I'm <laughs> yeah. bored. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So, yeah. So, Emil Yannings or Jannings. Uh, God, he was good in this. Yeah, um, he was. And he was in the Murnau's last picture, The Last Laugh, I believe, as well. 
which what got him, he pretty much had carte blanche on this movie. You know, that his last movie did so good, they mm, gave him mm-hmm. this monstrous budget. Um, anyway. And this, uh, this type of Faustian, Faust story has played out in a lot of different ways in a lot of different media. It's uh, anybody that read comics and knows the story of the, the Silver Surfer. Mm-hmm. Um, Mephisto was his main antagonist because when Stan Lee was writing him, he looked at the Silver Surfer as a pure soul, almost a Jesus Christ figure. Mm-hmm. And all Mephisto was all always trying to, um, for some reason, I mean, this is a dude from outer space that has these cosmic powers, but the devil's trying to get him to do it do something bad but he he was always the surfer's main antagonist i think besides uh galactus the guy that created him uh, nerd talk everybody but uh no that's it's just cool that this the is. story that it's this um <laughs> but this, it played, uh, universal yeah. story mm-hmm. it played out the same way uh, the silver surfer was taken away from his home world to become the herald of galactus and find planets for him to eat and but he was a pure soul. He was uncorrupted and this and that. So Mephisto was always trying to offer him things and, and twist things to make him come over to the dark dark side or whatever. But he never could could do it. And that that's um, one of my first um, experiences with this type of story, um, where Mephisto looks more like Satan than 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 this one. But mm-hmm. um, but it was a, it's, it's a time. It doesn't. It never gets old. This mm-hmm. tale is like mm-hmm. timeless. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. who's telling it or how it's being told. It's, it's a, a timeless story. I well, like you like- said, it talks about the human, like how over time and how easily we all are from becoming something we don't want to become or how mm-hmm. how easy it is just a few little things and then or whatever i mean i think something we yeah. can all relate to yeah. sorry whitney i interrupted oh, you no, it's fine no like chad talking about the influence in like comics but also it, it just made me think and i thought about it before i watched the movie today it was um even in music and i thought okay it, the first thing that comes to my mind, anyone that listens to progressive metal who listens to Camelot, and I remember they have the Black Halo album, and it has almost like a theme of that going on in that album. And the the main track that made that song, made out made that album huge, was this song called March of Mephisto. Mm-hmm. Like, and it made me think a lot about like, huh, that mm-hmm. that that's kind of like mm-hmm. the concept, a little bit of the concept of the album, mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Is there some influence from this film for for that band and mm-hmm. that album? So I don't know. It makes you think That's about pop cool. culture mm-hmm. references and it stuff. Does, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, this movie makes you think. Well, what what would I do? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it really does. It makes you feel like if I was faced with that question or that offer, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. what would I do? I, right. You know, right. would I try to help be a good person, or would I mm-hmm. try to be tempt? Would I, would I be tempted? And, Right. Sort of debase myself. I, I, those type of stories always make me think mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Well, and I, I like what Daphne said because that's what it always seems to me is you know because sometimes we look at things in history like uh, Hitler and the Nazi movement or right. current mm-hmm. politicians or corporations that get caught going down the wrong. Mm-hmm. path and doing stuff for afterwards you're going oh, why didn't anybody say anything you know mm-hmm. and i i think it's uh, to me it always seems like it's you do one little thing that doesn't seem like much mm-hmm. and then you do another little thing it's kind of like when the mob you know there's a lot of movies mm-hmm. where the mob gets you to do something and then after that you're theirs kind of mm-hmm. they, yeah. so it's like mm-hmm. you do one thing and then you do a little thing and each one gets a little worse and pretty soon mm-hmm. you like you can't go back you know, because mm-hmm. to go back is a huge decision because yeah. you've got to right. got to reveal everything. And so in here, it's the I'm going to I'm frustrated because this whole God thing isn't working, and all these people are dying, and I don't know what to do. And so I I 
turn to this and I'm at first, he's not going to do it, but then, Oh, just one day, just yeah. one day. And then when the crap hits the fan and he doesn't get what he wants, so he's beat down even a little yeah. more. Then we open up with, well, why shouldn't you be able to live right. a little, you know, yeah. you got a little time left. How about yeah. your youth back? And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're having a bad day and Mephisto just jumps in there and goes, well, you know, What's thou like to live deliciously? <laughs> yes. Anyway, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I it's it's uh, because uh, there's very few people. You know, I'm. You know, there are bad and quote unquote evil people. I think, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people that follow along with them that aren't. It's. I, I don't. That's where I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Well, we all like to think we would not do anything right. bad, mm -hmm. uh, but you never, you never know. It's like no. Jeff was saying; it just takes. Mm -hmm. it just as mm -hmm. the, one of the Joker from Batman, it's like all it took was one bad day. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, um, it yep. could just that could be it. You know, mm -hmm. so it, well, and think. Let's say you're in uh, you're in Germany in the late 30s. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to? side with the Jews are you going to keep your mouth shut and hope mm -hmm. this goes away in a hurry mm -hmm. because you're worried about your family because you mm -hmm. know that every anybody who says anything you know mm -hmm. so so in other words am I going to make a decision a life or death decision to defend this and, mm -hmm. and that's yeah sadly it goes on in a lot of situations today mm -hmm. like women in iran mm -hmm. whatever but mm -hmm. i'm not gonna open a can right. of worms with that but right. i think you guys know so right. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we're, we're all very close to going over to the other side i think yeah. in the right yeah. it, it's in the right in the right situation um it's not that hard to believe right you know? I am your father, Luke. <laughs> no! And I and I love stories that make you think. Of, I mean, like to me, that's like those are really important things to think about. Yeah. You know, oh. into like empathy and like humanity, uh, humanity, all those things. And it, and it's like, and so those are really cool. And then so then I love when I hear like you guys talking about comics and and music. You know, it's like you can find that stuff in lots. Maybe people express those questions and those <laughs> thoughts yeah, yeah. in all sorts of in all sorts of things mm -hmm. um which i think is super cool yeah so throw this throw the archangel up there Gosh, again so he was amazing. so cool too i mean the, the mm -hmm. framing of these shots is just awesome one of my favorite movies is constantine and tilda oh, yeah. swinton when i was looking at this i was like oh man because i i love tilda swinton in that movie and her costumes and mm -hmm. stuff like that and and this, I mean, I mean, this is super powerful, but it just made, yeah. it just made me think about her a little bit, but yeah. this is just amazing. Again, those wings are ginormous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The right. lighting and the shadow and the, you know, the feathers, it's, yeah, it's amazing. That, mm -hmm. that final dialogue, um, you know, where uh, Mephisto can't say or express like mm -hmm. that the, that last word mm -hmm. and then i i can't remember word for word um what was being said exactly but uh, he just couldn't say the word to um because of his own existence as being so evil he couldn't even say the word love mm -hmm. you know and that's that's mm -hmm. that's another tragedy in itself because mm -hmm. of everything that's happened to faust and what mm -hmm. he's compromised and what's happened with gretchen and mm -hmm. that was out of that was tragic because of the love and terrible things that happened there. But, but no, even Mephisto can't fathom love mm -hmm. right. and he can't right. say it. Mm -hmm. So even, even till the end, mm -hmm. that gets me. Mm -hmm. And this is uh Werner Federer, I think, or Federer. Mm. The, the actor, the actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, Cool stuff, and then someone help me understand. I don't know what was happening what was there. What was her I, name? Martha, Margaret, uh, Martha, yeah, Martha, yeah, and Martha. Martha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I oh man, yeah. <laughs> what was he? What well, was yeah, the and then he was fondling her breasts, yeah. and yeah, I don't. But what? then it's like she turned around, and said something to him, and he right. was like, "Oh my and god, he, you're burning. Yeah, why do I... you even do that? I know. What is... <laughs> Especially because we already got the idea of how manipulative he already was, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was just trying to put more emphasis on that with this character. Maybe. I don't mm. know. I don't know. He gives her a necklace, yeah. just like. Yeah, he gave to Gretchen, <laughs> right? And she like immediately Sweet. falls for him. Yeah, and just and he keeps putting on. It seems like he's wanting it, but as soon as she comes yeah. for him, then he sneaks out, yeah. runs away, and closes yeah. the gate in her. Or what, yeah, it's just really messy. And it doesn't. Her. There's. I don't know what's to be. I don't get in it in terms of the understand. story. I don't yeah. see that it, anything yeah. is to be gained by it. You know? Yeah. It's, it was almost like, like Wake said before, it was some kind of comic relief or yeah. something. Yeah. And yeah. maybe he just got distracted from his, you know, main. But I did go, wait, what? What's happening here? You know, for a <laughs> <Yeah>. second. <laughs> the devil doesn't care who he has. No, it. exactly. He has an opportunity mm -hmm. and he goes for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was trying to figure out, she, because she sold that potion to that one mm -hmm. guy. It was supposed to be three mm -hmm. drops and any woman will love you madly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but then it looked like, wasn't that the, did she just give him some tea? Was that it looked like was just, that just tea or something? And some, yeah, was it just a scam? Cause that. later yeah. she kept getting right yeah, just she about to too. drink something and yeah. then never quite did and yeah. until, until Mephisto added mm -hmm. his ingredients to it, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was his flaming and, spit. <laughs> yeah. And then. She goes into this really weird thing where I swear uh, it was almost like orgasmic for her. You mm -hmm. know, it's like first there was pain and then she's like, mm -hmm. oh, and she's got her hands down over her womb. Yeah. Uh, it's very bizarre. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is she going to die? Is she feeling something good? Is she yeah. dying? Is she feeling something good? Yeah. <laughs> when I was like, here's a little something for people in the back. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Cheap but you know, I did a little. I was researching some of the actors, you know, because I'm not really familiar Good. with any of them. And um, I think uh, Martha's uh, name, uh, the actor was called um, Yvette Guibert. And mm -hmm. she has a really, I mean, I really want to learn more about her because she seems to have like a really interesting um, history. She um, was a French cabaret singer or a French cabaret um, person. Oh, cool. And then. Um, Henri, uh, I always always uh, get scared when I'm trying to pronounce some of these. Um, Henri uh, de Toulouse Lautrec um, has lots of. I can see why of... you get scared. <laughs> um, he <laughs> has lots of sketches and character caricatures of her, um, oh. and. Um, oh, Toulouse Lautrec. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, I know. I was like, "What? That's so cool!" And then. Um, uh, Sigmund Freud considered her one of his favorite singers, and um, they were kind of describing the time, the type of uh, actor she was, and the type of performer. And during a certain time in French um, art history that I don't know anything about, but she seemed to be be like yeah, kind of an interesting, pretty big deal. Um, and that was when she was younger, and then now she's in this part. So um, I don't know. Maybe if some of the some of the stuff maybe had to do with her people might have recognized her or something i don't know um mm -hmm. but she sounded really really interesting yeah. oh yeah there's a there's, there's yeah well she there's made a, this part a, very uh, memorable. yeah mm -hmm. there's a toulouse lautrec thing in her uh, imdb images yeah there. oh is it, yeah well there's one on wiki yeah i don't yeah and uh so that's where i you know that was my small research that i did in there but that's very cool I that wow she sounds really cool well, this is one of those. Uh, what about Murnau? I mean, this is our second Murnau film, right? We did Nosferatu. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to find. You guys talk about something. I wish I knew more about how directors directed their movies back then. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. because I know and Whitney can attest that directors try to get their best um, performances out of their actors mm -hmm. and, and they sort of leave 
and they sort of oversee other aspects of the film. But but the the main thing is to try and get good performances out of their actors. So I wonder how much. It's probably a lot now that I think about it. But how much influence he had over what the special effects were going to look like mm -hmm. and right. the visual effects and, and how much um, he was involved in that kind of stuff as well. I tried to look some of that up and couldn't really find anything in the short time mm -hmm. that I that I had. Mm -hmm. But um, that's always been an interesting thing to me is, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. how directors work. And, and, and I'm really interested in how back then with these big productions and huge special effects and, and, and visual effects and stuff like that, how, how, how involved was the director in that, especially guys like Murnau. Um, mm -hmm. He was more or less a genius when it came to, mm -hmm. to stuff like this. Um, so when somebody asked, what do you think about the directing of, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I know. I have a hard I know time the, with that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the performances are great, and and but what I really want to know is how involved uh, with all the other aspects of it he, he was. Mm -hmm. And and my little knowledge, uh, as a friend of mine used to say, without the benefit of much knowledge, the uh, <laughs> um, it seems to me like that being a director, what the director does just is dependent on the individuals. Yeah. Some people, I think really do direct the actors or maybe they let them know but i think a, a big part of it i would think is getting the right people on the bus yeah. so to speak uh, you yeah, know, you that, get the... yeah that, that's that's very true I, I feel though that um movies were new then oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean Good i mean point. now now you'll a director will sort of know what an actor has done before and say, yeah, I want them for this role. I want them for mm -hmm. that role because he knows he'll get good performances. But with cinema being so new back then, how 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 yeah. involved were they? What's it? What's it, one of the things I was thinking when I was watching this was kind of in line to what you're saying, Chad. Was cinema was so new, you know, like about ten years old in terms of when they started making lots of shorts and stuff, and then kicked into feature films and look at what they're doing with the effects yeah. and the visuals. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's almost good that they didn't have sound to start with. Cause I think they just really focus on what they could do visually. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's, yeah, it's yeah. true. Too cool. Um, I, I don't know a lot about the cinematography either. Um, but I think I read that the cinematographer that was originally on it, um, ended up being replaced with somebody who Murnau actually really wanted to be on yeah. there. So maybe there was a, um, a relate, a strong relationship between the cinematographer and the director. Um, they said Carl Freund was the, was originally assigned to the picture mm -hmm. and got sick. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and Freund is a great cinematographer mm -hmm. and, and then directed <laughs> uh, what the mummy and Mad Love, I think. Um, but did cinema, cinematography and a bunch of those early films. So, um, but, you know, it, it's like who you're comfortable with. And if this guy uh, knows your style. I wanted to uh, say something uh, about the. So um, his name, I'm sorry. His name is no, Carl no, Hoffman, right. just to get that in there. The cinematographer is Carl Hoffman. Carl Hoffman. Um, the, the actor who played, um, Gretchen's brother, I think his name was, I can't, William Dieter Lee, maybe, mm -hmm. but I he, right. um, directed Hunchback from, of Notre Dame, Notre Dame with, um, uh, you know, Charles Lawton. So he, I guess he, uh, ended up doing more directing, but you know, I, I thought that was that. cool. I did see and there that was someplace. a couple other titles that he directed that I I haven't seen those movies, but um, I've heard of them. Um, so I thought that was cool. Uh, yeah, nominated. Let's see, nominated for an Oscar for best director for the life of Emil Zola, nineteen thirty-seven. Um, yeah, I saw that too. I saw that he had 
had been a director, and I can't remember where mm-hmm. I saw that. Um, there's the director, Samba. I don't know. Wow, he was directing clear up into the 60s. The Devil and Daniel Webster. That was That's one that it. I feel like I've heard of too, but I haven't seen. Yep. Uh, story of Louis Pasteur. I believe I've seen that. Starring Paul Mooney. And um, the person who played, um, who was it? Let me look up again here. Um, okay, so the guy who played Faust, he, um, one of his first film roles was for Victor Strostrom. Strostrom. Oh. A Phantom Carriage dude, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. But not, not that was interesting. Carriage, right? Just no. Another. It was some other one that I, I can't even be, I don't even want to try to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Well, okay, so let's let's hit uh Emil Yanning's. He won the first Oscar for Best Actor. Really? Wow, cool. That's 19, amazing. 1928, The Last Command. Um he was also in the last half, or last half, the last laugh. Uh, also, a famous movie, uh, The Blue Angel, starred Marlena Dietrich. I've heard of that, haven't seen it. Um, both of The Last Command and Blue Angel were directed by uh, Joseph von Sternberg. Um, now, when it got time to be World War II, he acted in a lot of. Nazi propaganda films and mm-hmm. Nazi supporting. But apparently, I don't know, there's a statement in his bio that says the U.S. government tried to clean up his image after the war and he converted to Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Um, but he never really, the career never really took off again. Mm-hmm. But he has got an amazing amount of energy in this movie. I mean, yeah. holy cow. He's mugging and... <laughs> This body language and everything. He was great. So I think uh, to mention too, this was Murnau's last German film. And he went to Hollywood after this. That I thought that was cool too when I was reading that because I really only know him from Nosferatu. And so um, when I was looking at Faust, I was like, oh, this is that same, you know, it's, it's a guy from Nosferatu. So I... To think that he then went to Hollywood and made a bunch of films, thats I, that was news to me, and I thought it was really interesting. Mm-hmm. So you want to look at other stuff that he made later. And he wasn't even the first uh, director picked for this movie. Oh. Uh, it says the, the company wanted Ludwig Berger to direct Faust, um, but Murnau pressured the producer and backed by Yannings eventually persuaded the producer Eric Plummer, Eric Palmer, to let him direct the film. Cool. And I haven't seen it, but the, his next film after this was Sunrise, which is supposed to be a phenomenal movie. It's, uh, I just, I haven't, haven't checked it out yet. Hmm. Apparently, they got into a mess with the uh, inner titles too. Um, it was first assigned to Hans Kaiser, a German novelist and playwright who started screenwriting. And, uh, but the company didn't like what he did. So then Gerhard Hauptmann, one of Germans, Germany's leading playwrights and winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, was hired and got paid twice as much as what Kaiser got paid. You have some company there? Yes, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, A little inappropriate for work, back of cat pictures. Oh. <laughs> sorry um, so yeah and th- so then they paid this guy twice as much 40,000 marks and then they didn't like it and instead of telling them they didn't like it they told him uh, there were unexpected difficulties before the premiere and we couldn't oh wow use your inner titles I, <laughs> I don't know yeah, I don't know if Lillian Gish would have been better. This is, she's pretty, uh, she's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I 
think she was amazing in this movie. I mean, Lillian Ford. Gish is awesome, but um, absolutely, absolutely. This uh, Camilla Horn, she was really good. So I don't know what else, any other comments we want to make here. Um, I did uh, for the music. Um, it I saw that this was. Um, uh, let's see. It was like one of the first two, Faust and um, Nosferatu um, were two of the first films to feature original film scores. So I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was listening to the music because, um, you know, one of the things I learned from you guys was that, you know, like sometimes this the music soundtrack goes in with these older movies that might go in, you know, later. Um and so I was listening to it kind of wondering, you know, because kind of had that in the back of my mind and then read that because the music was great for it. Well, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm just checking my notes here. Um, production extras. On the Kino Lorber, it says a piano score by Perez D. as Patia. Hmm. As P-E-I-T-I-A, adapted from the original 1926 orchestral score. Hmm. Um, and that's the one, I'm sure that's the one that I listened to because it was piano. Oh, okay. On the, on uh, a canopy, but it was more orchestral hmm. on the longer version, the horror. Oh, interesting. Uh, classic horror movie channel. Because they had the music by R. Hyman, Heyman, and, and then it, for Faust, um, and the first, the for the first, the original soundtrack, um, right, right, and then uh, yeah, so. Well, see, I'm looking I, at, uh, and there was a Kino Lorber credit on the one on Canopy mm -hmm. at the right. end. Uh, so I must and, not have heard the original, the original. Uh, yeah, um, I don't soundtrack. know. There, there's. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it was it sounded um, good? It wasn't distracting. Mm -hmm. Let's see file score compiled. Um, on the extras, there's like three different scores. Oh, cool. On the on the Blu-ray, orchestral score by the Mont Alto Motion huh. uh, Orchestral score by Timothy Brock. And uh, anyway. <clears throat> Well, I, I thought they did. They did good. Documentary, so yeah. I'm a cool with it. We had fun. It had a uh, 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if that means anything. They didn't. People didn't hate it. No. Nope. True. <laughs> nope. Uh, there was a book on. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna quote this because I don't have the book here. But. We already know it was one of the classic, one of the preeminent films thought of as an example of uh, German expressionism. All right. Well, is that it for today? Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm glad we watched it. I'm glad yeah. you picked that, Chet. Because, yeah, nice you know, it's one of those things, silent films, I look at them and I go, I got to watch this, I got to watch this, and then I know <laughs> I got to be in the right mood to Yeah, I'm the same way. But... To focus. Right. Um, but well, you guys, you got to watch it because it it's really, it looks really cool. It has a cool story. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's um, amazing to look at. It, yeah, it really it's is. gorgeous. Great story. Great. It's a pretty complicated yeah. story too. Yeah, a lot of yeah. it is developments. So if you've never seen it and you're waiting, yeah, you, for the reasons that we waited, <laughs> you should go ahead and watch it. It's yes. it's really good. So, yeah, so I didn't have time to collect feedback. Shame on me, but uh, we'll have some next time. And uh, what is it? Seventh Voyage of Sinbad just released yesterday. The uh, And I got the next pick, and I was going to pick The White Reindeer, the uh, Finnish film from Finland, <laughs> right it's next finished. to Sweden in between. Yeah. So anyway. This crap uh, is finished. But I can't find a good copy, so we're going to do that. If I can find a good copy for everybody to stream, 
Um, but if we can't, I'll think of something else. So you'll have to keep an eye out and see what it is we're going to do. Post it. You you can post it on the Facebook group, right? Yeah, yeah, and if it'll we, be if, in the blog. Yeah. You know, this this won't yeah. go live for a couple of weeks. We'll know by then, so okay. it'll be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of ways to stay in touch. Uh, please leave feedback. Please leave comments. I promise we're going to read them. We we read almost all the comments, um, unless you're not a nice person. <laughs> You can, you can dislike us if you want, but. <laughs> um, oh, God, I, I won't know. <laughs> huh? Huh? No, uh, I, I disagree with that. Okay, you can't dislike <laughs> us. Um, but so leave comments on the uh, Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel or send them to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or uh, check us out on the Gruesome Magazine's H&R and DOH podcast Facebook group. Um, I feel like I'm leaving something out. I guess. Did you take your pills? I didn't. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Okay. You caught the, me. The so. suppositories are on top of the refrigerator <laughs> behind you. Oh. There we go. I'm just trying to help them out. <laughs> well, between that and the plumbing problems, yeah. <laughs> well, if you take your suppository, you wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> Plumbing problems. Yeah. All right, everybody. Heart's so good. <laughs> Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the classic era. As only decades of horror can do it. Whatever Say that's going to be. Good night. <laughs> Whatever it is. It might be the white reindeer. It might be a different color reindeer. I don't know. <laughs> Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. The brown.